In today's video, we're taking a look at the future of Johnny Gaudreau in Calgary. Will he sign an extension, or could they actually trade him this year if they're not making the playoffs? Shea Weber has apparently been approved for now for long-term injury reserve. We have a waiver claim, as well as some more players on waivers, some pretty significant injuries, and a tricky situation in Toronto, where they've had to sign an emergency goaltender, basically, to an amateur tryout due to their cap situation being so tight. We'll discuss all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about here today. Uh, I want to kick things off with actually something that's a little bit uh, odd, strange, maybe a little bit funny to some, but the Vancouver Canucks had a little bit of a spelling error in their last game here. Uh, of course, they recently signed... Alex Chason, who was in training camp as a professional tryout, uh, gets his contract, gets his jersey, and they don't know how to spell his name. I'm sure he couldn't have been too pleased. I don't know the situation. Maybe they noticed it with not enough time to fix it. I have no idea, but of course, I'll show you a picture here as C-H-A-I-S-S-O-N. That is not how you spell Chason. A couple of letters reversed there. Um, not something you see very commonly, very often, but certainly um, something you don't like to see. I'm sure Chason himself wasn't thrilled. I'm sure it'll be fixed for the next game, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on in Vancouver, but they need to get that fixed. Of course, we have some news on some injuries today and some pretty significant ones as well as some more COVID hitting the Avalanche. Uh, we know the Avs have been without Nathan McKinnon to start the year for the first game or two because of a positive test. Of course, they lost Landis Cog uh, to a suspension, and now their new signed defenseman, who was a bit of a superstar sniper there in the first game, Jack Johnson, has now he's going to be out for a while because he's now tested positive for COVID. So uh, certainly the COVID protocols have an impact early on the Avalanche. Hopefully that doesn't get out of control, and hopefully they can get things uh, moving in a better direction. Uh, and one of their big Western Conference rivals, the Vegas Golden Knights, are already getting to the point where they're really hit hard with the injury bug. Uh, they already had some other players that are uh, hurt and are trying to get back into the lineup, like Nikolai Waugh, uh, as well as uh, Howden and a few others. And then Max Pacioretty and Mark Stone both got hurt. And we don't have a full diagnosis on Mark Stone yet. Uh, Pacioretty's issue apparently is a fracture. He's considered week to week. But it looks like it's going to be multiple weeks, at least in my opinion, before he's back. And he was having a really good start. Uh, Mark Stone, I'm guessing it looks like possibly a groin injury. Um, the way he went off, not putting a lot of weight on, and the way he was going down the tunnel. At least that, I mean, I'm no medical expert by any means, but... If I had to guess, that's what it looks like. They haven't released any kind of official word on the injury or the time frame, but those things can drag on for, you know, it's hard to say, right? Like, they're, they're one of those injuries that you really don't know. Uh, they're probably going to want to see how we respond to the treatment and stuff, but uh, probably a couple of weeks. So to be without your two top scoring wingers who play in your top line, all of a sudden that is not available to you. That's a really, really big blow. So Vegas certainly hit hard here as well early on with the injury bug. Now, of course, as I mentioned, we have some news from the NHL waiver wire. Christian Merlanen, who was on waivers yesterday from the LA Kings, has been picked up by the Buffalo Sabres. So he'll go over to Buffalo, hopefully get more of an opportunity to play. Of course, they'll have to keep him on their NHL roster for the time being. Uh, otherwise, they'd have to you know, put him through waivers again if they want to demote him. So they probably are not going to do that. At least they'll see how things go here for the next little while. But certainly, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, talking about Will Lannan, uh, he's a guy who's uh, you know played a decent amount of college hockey, signed in Ottawa where he was drafted, had a hard time getting into the lineup consistently, had his moments, went to L.A. I thought things were going to work out for him there, but they they really haven't, and now here we are on his third team. As a player, personally, I think he's a, a good defenseman. I'd like to see him make the best of it in the NHL, but uh, hopefully a team like Buffalo will be a team where he can find a spot. Um, and we'll see. The Sabres are off to a great start here, winning their first two games. Uh, so we'll see how much they can keep that up. I know many people have uh, picked the Sabres to be a, a struggling team this year, but obviously, uh, you know, it's, only, it's early, though. We don't want to get too judgmental either way, but uh, it's certainly going to hopefully be an opportunity for Willanna to get in the lineup. And the Anaheim Ducks have two players on waivers, including center iceman Derek Grant 
and defenseman Greg Pattern. So we'll find out uh, tomorrow afternoon if they will be claimed or not. Uh, they very well could be assigned to the minors. I'm not sure what their plans are exactly, but their two veteran guys been around the league some time. Wouldn't be shocking if either were claimed for a depth situation on other NHL franchises. Now, we also have a little bit of an awkward situation with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, as we know, uh, Peter Morazic got hurt in the last game. He started the game against the Ottawa Senators, which was the Leafs' second game of the year. Uh, at the end of the second period, he went down awkwardly. You could tell it appeared like a groin injury. We don't really have a firm diagnosis right now. They haven't come out and said anything much. Um, they have Michael Hutchison, who would normally be their number three goaltender, who was cleared waivers and was with the Marlies in the AHL. The problem is, is the Leafs don't have the necessary cap space to call him up. So right now they also have Justin Hall, who is apparently appears to be uh, out. Uh, Hall, I think, is suffering from a cold. He's been tested so far. He's negative for COVID. Either way, uh, even though the COVID uh, protocols are not keeping him out, he's still not well enough to play no matter what. So they have to put Lilligren in so they're not short of defensemen. And because of that, they can't call up a goaltender. That's how tight things are salary cap wise so what they're going to do as an emergency situation here is they've signed former st john sea dog goaltender and current university of toronto goaltender alex bishop to a one game amateur tryout so um he's going to be able to be the backup to jack campbell tonight he will only see the ice if campbell gets hurt which obviously leaf fans and the leafs organization really do not want to see that would be a disaster for them to lose both their goaltenders due to injury so early on uh, so they really need to hope Campbell can stay healthy. Uh, when it comes to Morazic, uh, they haven't come out and said what kind of timeline they're expecting. But again, it's probably fair to say that it could be a couple of weeks. But you just never know. Groin injuries are tricky and can uh, drag on for goaltenders, especially uh, because of all the way they move and the flexibility and everything that's required for that position. Now, the problem with the system here, the way everything works with the cap, is they cannot use an emergency recall unless you've gone at least one game being short in that position. Uh, so because of that, they could be allowed an emergency recall and uh, basically be al allowed some cap flexibility there, so they can't do that. So they only really need uh, this goaltender, uh, Alex Bishop, for the one game, and then after that, if Marazic's going to be out, and he likely is going to be, then they can call up Hutchison and go forth from there with Hutchison and Campbell being the duo uh, until Morazic can return. So it's quite a, a sticky situation uh, and see where things go from there, but uh, we'll see what happens. Like I said before with the Leafs, uh, they have two good goaltenders in Campbell and Morazic. Both have an injury-prone history in an 82-game season. So if I have any concerns for them this year, that is appears to be it really for me so we'll have to see where things go now the montreal canadians too also got confirmation I mean, this came out in the last day or so that uh, shape weber has been approved to, for a long-term injury reserved but the key wording was for now like the, the league and bill daly sent a statement saying that they're not currently challenging the application for weber's long-term injury reserve and it says currently right so that's the key active word there now many people feel that shea weber is never going to play hockey again and it's a situation because of the nature of it he's got so much term on his contract i'm sure the league is not going to be fond of it if he ends up on ltir for the remainder but at the same time what can you do if the injuries are hockey related you know then it's only justified but the problem is and the reason it's probably being scrutinized a little bit more is that he played every game uh, leading up to the end of last season he was a warrior for them in the playoffs playing 20 plus minutes a night in their final game of the year so if you end the season and you're able to play it just seems it's an unusual situation to be able to start the next year and not be able to play and it's just a situation where anybody who's been around them says it's you know they can verify that his body's just broken down to the point that he's had that bad foot for a long time uh, and so many other things going on with them that it's just not possible for him to play hockey without really sacrificing his quality of life long term so i wouldn't be shocking if this is a situation that the league monitors closely and they can't guarantee at this point that the, the ltir will carry on for the remainder but only time will tell as that situation carries on now as far as trade rumors today we only have one player we're really looking at here and that's johnny gaudreau in calgary uh, i want to reference an article from the athletic and writer pierre lebrun talking about the flames and their top uh, offensive player that they've had for some time now of course we know that johnny gaudreau is a pending unrestricted free agent 
And he's been a player that's really been scrutinized a ton, especially in the last few years. There are some local media in Calgary that have been convinced for a long time that he does not want to be there and that he will bolt the second he gets a chance and he wants to go back home, play in the eastern U.S., whether it be Philly, New Jersey, or somewhere in that area that's closer to where he's from. And uh, they are convinced that's going to happen. Like, like obviously, you probably know who I'm referring to. But then there were others like Pierre Lebrun is saying that at this point, he doesn't have any reason to say that Gaudreau does not want to say. Gaudreau is saying all the right things, continues to do so publicly. And I don't expect anything to change on that front. But Lebrun has reported that there's been, like, everything is quiet. There's no progress. There doesn't really appear to be much going on at all for talks for extending him. So to me, that's kind of sending the signal that the Flames are probably more content to take the wait and see approach, right? I mean, if they were that anxious to lock up their top offensive player on a long-term contract and commit to him, wouldn't you think they would have been pushing hard to get that done? And obviously, even if they were trying, that means they're far apart. There's obviously a gap there that has not been bridged. And if things are quiet now, maybe it's in both sides' best interest to kind of wait this out here a little bit. But I honestly think Calgary is a team that is, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting year. If things go well and they're trending in the top three teams and they're looking like playoffs is going to be a good possibility, then I would imagine they're going to run with this group and give them one last crack at a playoff opportunity to have playoff success. But if things are not going to greatest and they're not going to be in the playoffs, uh, which I'm projecting that I, I'm not confident they, that they will be, uh, this team is disappointed in the standings too many times that it's hard for me to have a lot of faith in them. To be completely honest, that's just how I currently feel about the makeup of the Flames team. They have some good players there. I'm just not sure that it's the right mix to really have uh, you know, an extended success rate. With all that being said, if we get later on into the year, and even you know whether it be even before the deadline, even at Christmas time, and things are not trending well, I can see a situation where they might look to sell off guys like Gaudreau and Monaghan. Those are the two main guys that have been there the longest with this core group of players. They have not had any playoff success. They've had regular season success, but even that has waned in the last year or two. Uh, obviously, Monaghan's dealt with a lot of health issues and obviously had to have a hip surgery, and we'll see where things go. But personally, at this point, I'm not entirely convinced that Gaudreau does want to leave. Uh, just it's sounding more and more like that the Flames are kind of, you know, not pushing super hard to sign him. And if that's the case, that means that they're probably on the fence about maybe trading him. They want to see how things go. So to me, if the Calgary Flames do not have a solid year this year and it's not going to be a playoff team, I would be quite surprised if they do not trade him and Monaghan or both of them. It's quite a possibility. I mean, at the end of the day, they got to do what's best for the organization to move forward, and they could probably get a pretty good return on a guy like Johnny Gaudreau. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Flames situation. Do you think Johnny Gaudreau is going to extend? Does it make the most sense for the team to do that? Does it make more sense to consider making some trades for players like him and Monaghan and to move forth with the other members like Lindholm, like Kachuk, and then Hannafin, Tanev on the back end, Markstrom, and see if he can bring in another player or two like a Jack Eichel. They've been linked to Jack quite a bit, right? So, I mean, if they pull off that kind of trade, you know, they may, you know, I, I don't know, obviously that would probably change things for Gaudreau, but at the same time, you know, it could change the whole makeup of this team. And just because um, Eichel could come in, it doesn't mean Gaudreau stays in as part of that solution longer term. So let me know what your thoughts are. We'll discuss down in the comments. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh,